I would like you all to do a visualization experiment with me, if you would. Think about collaboration as the flow of water. When collaboration is going well, things flow freely. When, co when collaboration isn't going so well, it dams up. After a while, and in today's society, collaboration has become very complex. There's millions of people trying to work on billions of different types of things together. And so a lot of process has built up and come in the way. So I like to visualize this as a giant dam, something like the Hoover Dam. So imagine the Hoover Dam in your mind, a great big edifice of process, things that you have to do and hoops that you have to jump through in order to collaborate with each other. Some people in the software development world even think that these hoops should be there, that maybe if we put a little bit of pain in front of the process of collaboration, of contributing code back to an original project, that that will somehow filter out the lazy. I think that's absurd. I think that's a terrible idea. And that's the exact opposite of what we do at GitHub. What we do at GitHub is a little bit different. GitHub started three years ago as a very simple concept. Several of us were open source developers. We had a lot of code out there in the open that people were using and that people wanted to contribute to. So what did we do? We spent our weekends and our nights working on this code. And as I'm sure you're well aware, sometimes when it's an evening or weekend, you'd rather be watching TV instead of taking in patches for your source code that you feel responsible for because this is your project, this is your baby, this is now almost a second job taking care of this code. And we had a lot of this, and so we spent a lot of time doing it. And after a while, you start thinking, why is this so hard? Why is it so hard to take contributions to my software? Because back then, really the accepted paradigm was someone gets a piece of your code, they download your code from online from a tarball, or probably back then it was Subversion, and you check out a single revision of that code and you have that locally. You make some changes, and now the fun begins. Now you have to create a patch, you have to then find a mailing list or some other avenue to contact the original author, send that to them, and then wait for what? Who knows? Where does that patch go? How do you find it again? How do you track it? What is it associated with? All of this information is spread around, and everyone is doing things completely different. So along came this magical little system called Git. And Git is a distributed version control system that makes some very interesting things possible. Git is different in that it is distributed. And what I mean by that is every clone of a Git repository represents the entire history of that project and is self-contained. You can work on a Git repository without any internet, for instance. On an airplane, I do a lot of traveling now. I spend a lot of time on an airplane, and I do a lot of coding there because there's no distractions. So there's a, there was this great concept, this great system called Git that was available. And yet, it was still very difficult to get these changes back and forth. The system was supposed to be distributed and make working on projects together a lot easier, but it didn't do that because in order to get those changes around, you had to give someone access to a server or connect directly to their machine or do something else that was difficult to discover and required a bunch of extra painful activities. So we said, let's make this process less painful. Let's create a website as we were web, develop web developers in order to host repositories and make a single location to collaborate within, right? A single place that you can go to that you will know that the projects that you're interested in, that's where they'll be, and that's where the collaboration, collaboration will proceed from. That single point. That single point is very important as far as collaboration. The single point of collaboration with the distributed nature of Git is sort of the perfect mix. And the reason that this system, that what we did at GitHub, is different 
and successful is that we follow this kind of paradigm, this kind of thought, which is don't make people jump through a bunch of hoops that are unnecessary. GitHub is the first place online that you've been able to create projects without having to have permission from the site itself. Everyone else would make you fill out forms, and if your project was cool enough, then maybe we'll let you put it up there. We don't work that way. You can put whatever code you want up there anytime you want. And that's a huge change. Reducing the height of that dam, of that dam that is blocking the flow of collaboration, if we can lower the height of that dam by making enough of these processes simpler to where it's below the water level behind it, then you will just have a torrential cascade of collaboration opening up to you. So lowering the height of that dam is what we do at GitHub. Another way that we do this is by making it so that you don't even necessarily have to have Git installed in order to collaborate on things. You can make changes to repositories. You can code directly on the website. If you go to a file and hit edit, you can edit it right in place on the website and make commits from there. And other people are creating even better tooling around this concept. Entire IDEs are built around GitHub now so that you can code online. You don't need Git. You can do that on your own now. Another very valuable concept that we have is personal responsibility. And this phrase, we put this on shirts and we sell it. This is very indicative of, of the philosophy that we have, which is I'm going to do what I need to do no matter what. If you make that easier for me, then I'll do it that much more often, right? So really what that means is take responsibility for what you're doing. And even if someone else is putting barriers up in front of you, use systems that are available to overcome those and make code better. Let me lay some statistics on you, because those are always impressive. A few examples. Right now, GitHub has 670,000 users that have signed up, mostly developers. And they're using these tools. And they're using them on a variety of things now, things that are different from code. There are people writing books on GitHub now. The US law code is on GitHub now, so that you can track changes in the laws that are being made. Because the lawyers don't want you to know what those are sometimes. They try to hide them. When bills are made, there's all kinds of stuff in there that's hidden. They're tacking little things on. If we can expose those through another, me um, another mechanism that Git makes possible, the concept of diffing, making it easy to see what changed between two versions of software or text in general, well, that's a way to collaborate and say, hey, these things aren't right. They need to change. One of my favorite examples is software called Homebrew. Homebrew is a package manager for the Mac operating system. This software didn't even exist eight months ago. And now it has over 2,000 forks on GitHub. That's nearly 2,000 people that have forked that software, made a contribution, or intended to, and sent it back upstream. That's how new packages are deployed to this package management system. Other things like Rails have 1,300 forks, Node.js. 600 forks. So you can see that this concept, when exposed to you, when you break down those barriers, people will start contributing. And I want you to think, how can you use this same concept in your daily lives and at your workplace and in your processes to make collaboration simpler? Think about that. Because together, we can end the Cold War of collaboration, and we can tear down the walls of wasted time. Thank you.